Welcome to the section about dressing room activities and movements, meaning integrated movements. First, I think we need to almost address the elephant in the room that waiting is not fun. Whether you're a 15 year old or a five year old, waiting is not fun. So maybe you're only in one dance, maybe you're in three dances, but the show is three hours. So you got a lot of waiting. Now, how can we make the recital, the whole event be like the highlight of the year? Well, actually plan for the dressing room time. It's not like they're cattle waiting to go on a cargo ship. Like they're not just corralled and waiting. That is precious time that you can be using to mentally warm up, physically warm up, emotionally warm up, do community bonding, feeling connected. All of that can be done. It just takes a bit of planning, okay? A kid who's in waiting mode, think about waiting. Their energy gets turned down and down and down and down. And depending on how long you wait for, it might shut off. But if backstage is fun and being effective in preparing before the performance, they're gonna remember that and the performance will show up. If it's fun and enjoyable and connecting and something that kids wanna be part of after their performance is done, they're still gonna remember the whole event as being positive. Okay, there's nothing worse than a kid dancing in the first 10 minutes of the show and then waiting backstage bored out of their skull for two hours. What are they gonna remember more? First 10 minutes, last two hours, okay? That could be why students don't come back. Did you love the recital? No, it was boring. Oh, well, what was boring about it? Maybe the performance they loved, but they remember in the dressing room. So studio owners take note. If you want your students to keep re-signing up, the whole event needs to be planned. Not just, I've got a parent helper, they've got some crayons, that's good enough. There's more you can do and I highly recommend taking the time to do it. Maybe not all at once, maybe year over year, you'll start implementing more and realize um, how it pays dividends. Now, just a little bit more about the waiting. I already mentioned that the energy can go down and that can be dangerous for loss of students. But there's another piece about waiting that we need to be thinking about. When somebody's waiting, it means they're probably not that engaged, right? If this is pre-performance and a kid has just a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of worry about something, it can spiral upwards. So that use of time waiting can be spent getting into quite a tizzy fit. Okay, if nobody's there to guide and redirect and keep the sense of connection with the community, we don't know how this child's gonna spiral out, okay? So it's not just not keeping them bored or prevention of boredom, it might be prevention of anxiety. Pre-performance or even post-performance if they're anxious about their parents not being around yet, okay? So take these suggestions to heart for the performance and for the re-registration. So teachers, it might even be, hey, all my students signed up again, my job's secure. Okay, all of this time is worth it. You've done so much work up until now in class to get the dance ready. Don't stop the preparation now. So dressing room, that's where I warm up. Yes, okay, costume makeup. Let's assume that's done. And we've had our dress rehearsals a plenty before, so it's not a stressor then. We now have a physical warm up, a mental warm up, an emotional warm up, and the social connecting and bonding of the group. Those four things all take place in the dressing room. You can see it's not really just a holding zone. Now I'm gonna address something that many people do and I'll give you my take on it. A lot of ones they go, oh, it's all good. I've got a movie playing in the back. They just watch the movie. Have you ever tried to haul a child away from a movie that they love and their favorite part is coming up? They might go kicking and screaming. They might be really resentful of having to go backstage and do their dance now. Or what about a child who's never seen the movie and really enjoying it? They don't want to go. So this keeping them entertained and engaged with the movie, I'm going to say it's a yes and it's a no. It's a yes if there's a movie room. If there is a change room you can dedicate, a space you can dedicate to that for after kids have done their final performance. Okay, where you're never going to be hauling a child away to go perform. The finale may be being an exception, I suppose. But then make sure the movie will have finished before the finale. OK, 
okay? I would have it where, oh, they get to know, oh, these are the fun and games and exciting things we do in this dressing room. After you dance, you get to go to the change room that's being assigned as the movie room. Cool. I don't know if you have enough rooms to do that, but if you do, that's how I'd suggest it. If it's, here's the big holding space for the three to six-year-olds and there's a movie playing and they're all crowding around doing that, they're not being part of their group. They're not doing a physical warm-up, a mental warm-up, an emotional warm-up. And you might be pulling them away from something they do not want to be pulled away from. It's like babysitting a kid and having to enforce a, a bedtime that they don't want. They're going to go kicking and screaming. You're going to have resistance. You don't have time to have resistance to getting a kid out on stage. What if they cry and ruin all their makeup? Now you got to do that again. What if you started to pull them away with only like seven minutes to go? They're just the little kids. It's okay. They don't need to warm up. Yeah, they do. Because you don't want to pull them away, seven minutes to go, gather them all up and try to get them backstage. Not if one of them has a meltdown that takes five minutes <laughs> to recover from. You won't have time for that. So prevent it. That's my take on having a movie backstage. Maybe you have somebody instead reading stories out, really short stories that maybe they do on repeat where, so if you can say to one little group, it's okay, I know you didn't hear the end of the story. When you come back, I'll do this story again. Assuage their fears, they're fine. They get to come back and hear the beginning of the story again, yay. Okay, those are, there's always solutions. All right, so you as the adult, you have to help all of these students organize and manage their time. Yes, it is a life skill that we hope our students, especially our more senior students are learning. But as I mentioned earlier, the recital is not the learning state time. It's the play out what I already know time. So help them to organize and manage their time appropriately. You know how there's often backstage, you know, five minutes call, 10 minute call, whatever, and they give the countdown. I would do the same thing. Maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody else where you've got your little cheat sheet we talked about before and you've noted, I'm going to go to the senior dressing room here to tell them they got a 10 minute call and it's time that they do their calf muscle stretch. And then I'm going to go to this room and tell them they got their five minute call and remind them that this or, ooh, 20 minute call. This is the time to take all the three-year-olds to the bathroom. Okay. Organize it. You're the adult in the room. Okay. Don't make them try to figure it out when they've got actually enough juggling going on that we are often not as aware of. We think that they just worry about their dance, but there's so much that goes into that. So you having your little checklist, you're modeling how to use their time or how to use your time and therefore their time well. Model it. Backstage dressing room time is not glorified babysitting. And if it's treated that way, you could be missing an opportunity to prepare them. I think we've established that. But the part I want you to consider is that you could also be unpreparing them. It could be going backwards because of all the reasons I said, the waiting energy down or anxiety up, pulled away from something they don't want to be pulled away from. All these things can unprepare them. They might've shown up backstage first in a better state to perform than they now are 45 minutes later. We don't want to see that happen. 